So tonight we're looking at uh, part 33 of wild harvest edibles. And uh, just as a reminder of <clears throat> our time together, that uh, some of the things that will be shared here will be helpful <clears throat> in your toolbox for uh, maintaining health and wellness, regaining health if you, if you have lost it, maintaining it if you have it, <clears throat> and that uh, it's not shouldn't be construed as medical advice, but just simply as another tool in your arsenal of uh, approaches to maintaining wellness and re regaining it <clears throat> and to check things out thoroughly on your own, do your own due diligence and not just uh, take anything uh, for face value that you may encounter, whether it be from me or from anybody else. Um, Thomas Edison said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame and diet and in the cause and prevention of disease. <clears throat> There are still some doctors that are practicing in that way, um, but it seems as though many doctors have been kind of bullied away from practicing as a physician um, should. And we've seen that more and more in today's environment. But Thomas Edison was very far thinking in, in that concept. Tonight, our our topic is going to be the lion's mane mushroom and the lion's mane mushrooms uh, genus and species are Curcium aranaceus. Uh, it's a very common and popular edible and medicinal mushroom in Asia. It also grows in the United States um, across the country. Some other names for the lion's mane mushroom are the bearded hedgehog mushroom or bearded hedgehog fungus bearded tooth mushroom and the pom-pom mushroom. You can see the one there on the right there looks like it could be a pom-pom almost. Uh, one of the things that cheerleaders would have used back in the day. Uh, some of the strengths from a medicinal standpoint are aiding the nervous system and the brain. There's a very powerful antioxidant suite of capabilities as well as anti-inflammatory. We'll see those uh, being helpful in a number of different ways. So they tend to be present mid-August through the autumn, through fall. Uh, they're typically found on dead and wounded hardwoods of all types. And it was stated quite strongly in a presentation I saw a couple of weeks ago that if a fungus is growing out of wood, it is, it is edible as opposed to that being growing out of the ground uh, may not be just depending on what kind it is. But that being said, you still want to verify the identification of and the edibility of any mushroom you may encounter before ingesting it, because the consequences can be dire if it happens to be a non-edible mushroom. So the lion's mane prefers beech, oak, and maple. So we don't have many beech around here. We do have some, we don't have many oak, we do have some. Uh, most of what we have is maple, uh, although they will grow on other types of trees as well. It appears as a bunch of white icicles, and it tends to focus on a single point. You can see the upper one, they're kind of dangling down, and the, other, the one on the lower right looks like, a, looks like a waterfall, almost looks like we were kind of looking at, uh, there in Yellowstone, there's the, the sediment pits, not pits, but I think it's Mammoth, Mammoth, it's not Mammoth Falls, but uh, <clears throat> there's that area where they have all the sediment uh, from the uh, hot, thermal hot springs that come up. It kind of has that, that appearance to it. <clears throat> so the spines are soft. They're from a half inch to two inches in length. And the spines as well as the spores themselves are white. As they age, they will get yellowish to pinkish. And as they're aging, they become less desirable and useful for their edibility and medicinal purposes. So all lion's mane lookalikes are also considered edible, just a note for that. So one of the keys to note is that the, the downward pointing icicles or spines, they're growing down. If you're unsure, be sure to consult an, an mushroom expert before ingesting any mushroom. Coral mushrooms are mushrooms that have fingers sticking up. So those would be stalag mites. They might reach the ceiling, so to speak, or stalag tights. If you're thinking of cave sediments, 
would be hanging tight to the ceiling. So these are more like stalag tights um, and icicles dripping down as opposed to pointing up. They will always point down. And that's a key identifying feature of the lion's mane. So edibility, they can be eaten dry, cooked. So when they're dry, they're often powdered. So you can eat them in a powder form uh, or steeped in a tea. So the flavor and texture has been described as being similar to that of a crab or a lobster by comparison. So for folks not accustomed to seafood, it may not be a sought after delicacy. <clears throat> Just saying. <clears throat> Here are some pictures of it in a hand size, so it can get much larger than that. Uh, here on the left there, it looks almost like artichoke hearts, the way it's been cut apart there in a harvested bowl, ready for either fresh usage or for drying for later usage. <clears throat> Medicinally, it may be used uh, daily in a double extracted tincture. We've talked about that in the last two episodes uh, and previously how to conduct a, a double extracted tincture. So look back at the reishi mushroom and the turkey tail mushroom for exact, and also the usnia for a double extracted tincture process. So it can, it can be used as a tea. It can be powdered and used in cooking. Just add it to whatever you're cooking. Uh, and it has its most profound medicinal effects if it's used on a regular basis. So one area that it has a benefit is the brain function. Now looking on the right, you can see three different varieties of the, not varieties, but phases of the lion's mane. The upper one is kind of turning brown and yellowish. The, the middle one is turning pink. So those are gonna be moving on in their age, probably wouldn't really wanna use those. And then the lower one is gonna be more like what you would use. It's been extracted or cut from the tree. So it has kind of some browning at the base of its attachment point, uh, <clears throat> but the rest of it is looking very nice and pristine. So it has a known capacity for helping to enhance memory and stimulates cognitive function. So one of the things that can do is increase oxygenation and blood flow, and that would aid the thinking process. So cognitive function is essentially being able to think clearly. It also is beneficial in preventing and treating neurodegenerative diseases. So those are wide in their variety. So there's uh, Alzheimer's, you can see in the list below, dementia, uh, Parkinson's multiple sclerosis is a neurodegenerative disease, specifically the myelin sheath is being uh, removed or digested by the body. It's an autoimmune kind of a situation. Diabetes, the nerve damage is secondary to the diabetic condition, but the neuropathy that's associated with that can be benefited by the lion's mane mushroom. So essentially what it does is it encourages regrowth and recovery of nerve, nerve function. Typically speaking, we think of peripheral nerves. Those are all the nerves that are extending to our digits throughout our body. Those have the capacity to regrow. Typically we think of the central nervous system nerves, brain, spinal column as if they're damaged, they're, it's permanent. Probably less so for spinal, uh, if there's any chance for recovery, but the brain is the most fragile. It's also the most ardently protected by the skull and the meninges. <clears throat> so it can slow and possibly reverse brain cell degeneration. So there's some regenerative capacity that's been found associated with the lion's mane mushroom. One of the ways it does that, the mechanisms, is increasing the presence of acetylcholine. That's a neurotransmitter, as well as choline acetyltransferase. So an ACE is always an enzyme. So choline acetyltransferase is an enzyme that helps to break down the acetylcholine once it's been utilized as appropriate target tissues. So both of those, the enzyme as well as acetylcholine itself are noted as being depleted and reduced in their presence in Alzheimer's patients. So it's actually a key component, key neurotransmitter for cellular nerve communication. It, it's those neurotransmitters that are moving from nerve to nerve to the synaptic junction and synaptic gap between nerves that allow communication between nerve cells. Has some cancer protective roles. It struck me as I was putting this picture on that uh, the lion's mane mushroom on the upper right 
almost even look a little bit like some cancer cells. And that's just kind of a, a striking observation. But it has good effects in cancers such as lung cancer, uh, stomach cancers, esophageal cancer. So those are uh, stomach and esophageal are both in colon cancer or digestive tract cancers. We have liver cancer. Uh, the liver is an amazing organ. It has the capacity to regenerate if destroyed. <clears throat> and it's probably one of the most taxed and uh, important organs of our body uh, because it does a lot of detoxification, it does all the detoxification. We have leukemia, so that's a blood disorder, as well as skin cancers and breast cancers can be positively impacted by the use of Lyme's main mushroom. Basically, it stimulates the immune system to kill the cancer cells because that's essentially what's gone wrong with cancer cells is that they have lost their, their signal to expire, to die. They just continue growing and proliferating and essentially have an immortal lifespan unless they are directly opposed. And the way modern medicine does that is either by extracting them through an incision process or through irradiating them with radiation and killing them that way, or by chemotoxicity through chemotherapy. All three of those are quite radical treatments uh, because it takes, gives the body, the body takes a big hit on any one of those, those methodologies. So if we can use something that's natural and less invasive and more targeted, that is preferable if possible. There is drug development underway that is attempting to have targeted drug mechanisms, but even those are man-derived and not uh, don't have safety and efficacy associated with them. There are things that can go awry with those types of things that, that God designed into the inherent capacity of the things that he designed, like plants and fungi. So it can control tumor growth and also prevent metastasis, that is the spread of cancer around. So again, the cardinal signature way that you would observe and recognize the lion's mane is the downward facing teeth or icicle-like appearances of the lion's mane mushroom. It's also beneficial for the circulatory system. The lion's mane mushroom supports uh, the heart and the circulatory system one way by lowering LDL cholesterol. So LDL cholesterol is typically the one is most affected by diet. So this would be a dietary intervention. It also lowers blood triglycerides, which is another way of saying fat that's in the blood uh, and also improves fat metabolism overall. So it would help reduce the entrance of that fat into the circulatory system. Also improves blood clot uh, prevention, reduces the risk of heart attack or stroke, which would be associated with those blood clotting uh, activities, and also increases oxygen saturation and overall circulatory uh, function. So there's some asterisks by those, which it's been noted that in the recent injectables uh, for the, the recent uh, scourge that uh, blood clots are one of the things that tend to especially affect those who've been injected, but even those who sometimes uh, get it who have not been injected. Uh, the blood clots are a uh, potential interaction and was just uh, viewing a presentation here recently where it behooved people who fell ill to this scourge that they take aspirin. And that is because of its anticoagulation effects. Well, it looks like we may have something here that's of natural origin that it wouldn't be as hard on the body as, as prolonged aspirin intake and actually have other beneficial aspects as well, including increased oxygen saturation, because that's one of the things that declines significantly in this sudden acute respiratory syndrome that we're seeing. And uh, so aiding and improving the circulation, improving the oxygen saturation. Uh, and then if you can use something like dandelion, it prevent the disruption of the membranes and the attachment of the pathogenic agent to those membranes. It would uh, help to um, aid recovery and reduce the, the influence of that complicating 
toxin. <clears throat> So looking at the gastrointestinal tract, it also has benefits there for GI uh, function and AIDS, leaky gut, some treatment for gastric ulcers, gastritis, which is essentially inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract, irritable bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis. The picture on the left is essentially an intestine interior that has lots of lesions on it. And someone who has all those kinds of lesions on the inside of their gut, is going to have a feeling that the lower picture, like someone's just ripping their intestines out with barbed wire. Thankfully, I've never experienced that, but I can only imagine what it must be like to have that intense pain associated with a gut that is, that is severely inflamed. I initially was looking for a picture of a, uh, a healthy gut. So the upper picture on the right with the back black background, uh, I looked at that and it, it looked like it was probably healthy, but then it struck me that I wasn't seeing what's known as the brush border. And the lower intestinal picture actually shows a very healthy intact brush border. That's the inside of an intestine, the way it ought to look. All those individual projections, those fingers coming down, they're called the villi. And that just exponentially increases the surface area, even beyond the upper picture on the right, that looks kind of smooth and flat. <clears throat> That's going to have absorbed to the surfaces, but the the projections of the villi and the microvilli that are on, are on all those, those are going to, those are the absorptive surfaces. That's how the nutrients get from our food into our circulatory system and into our body to do the jobs that, that they are needed for. So that's a, a very healthy, fuzzy looking interior of intestine. It makes me wonder how often they actually see that when they do a, an upper, uh, an upper GI inspection, uh, maybe less often than, than they used to. But that is a healthy, a healthy intestinal tract with the intact brush border, they call it, with the intestinal villi being intact. So someone who has like irritable bowel syndrome or uh, just simply even diarrhea, uh, basically they're having a breakdown of that villi and it's looking more like the upper one. It may not have the lesions on it like the left side, but the upper one is just smooth. And so with less, less absorptive surface and less texture to slow the movement of the food stuff in the gut down, it's gonna go through faster and come out uh, sometimes whole and undigested and just rapid transit through the bowel. Um, but that brush border helps to slow things down and aids the absorptive process that takes place for getting optimal nutrition. So brain stressors, so the lion's mane benefits mental health, uh, sleeplessness, insomnia, anxiety, depression. It can also reduce, as we mentioned earlier, the progression of dementia, uh, whether that be Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia, and can aid in brain cell regeneration, which we alluded to earlier. That's one of the toughest tissues to have any regeneration uh, take place in. It's, in fact, it's been thought that there has been no regeneration of, of neurological tissue in the brain but it seems that that may not be necessarily so. And also improves brain function. So stress and anxiety uh, and their symptoms. So heart palpitations, so that's a rapidly beating heart, um, irritations of the, of the heart and, or just being irritated and ability to focus and concentrate. Those are some symptoms of stress and anxiety and not only aiding the stress and anxiety, but aiding those, those secondary symptoms. So we talked about it as being an anti-inflammatory effect. So very powerful anti-inflammatory. It prevents most chronic diseases because most chronic diseases have an inflammatory basis. If you can shut down inflammation, you can shut down most disease processes. So heart disease is a, a disease of infl inflammation. Diabetes is another kind of source of inflammation disease. Uh, essentially the body isn't able to process the, uh, insulin and the sugar that it is being um, targeted for entering the tissues, uh, cancer prevention, other autoimmune diseases. Basically, there's very powerful antioxidant effects that are uh, present in the lion's mane mushroom, which prevent the oxidation and or the essentially the breakdown of, of various molecules and tissues and structures and the associated inflammation. And that inflammation and breakdown process is what leads to disease. So again, a couple different presentation um, mechanisms or presentations of the lion's mane mushroom there on the right. 
So the gut's immune has a large role to play in the immune system. So lion's mane aids the intestinal immune system, it fights bacteria, yeast, viruses, and fungi, and also aids in some regard with just a healthy microbiome, essentially is what, you call it, what we call it. Uh, there's a, a new book by Dr. Stephanie Seneff called Toxic Legacy, which really pinpoints glyphosate, which is the primary active ingredient in Roundup, as being a very disruptive component in our gut microflora. One of the pathways, number one, it's a chelator, so it binds up minerals and makes them unavailable to be used by the body. Uh, but in plants, there's a pathway called the shikimate pathway, which glyphosate disrupts, and that disruption kills the plant. But it also turns out that while we don't personally in our tissues have the shikimate pathway, our gut bacteria does. And if we uh, kill our gut bacteria, in fact, glyphosate and Roundup was actually patented as an antibiotic because it has that antibiotic effect by killing the gut microbiome. And essentially you have hamstrung your immune system when, you're, when your gut microbiome has been stripped of its uh, constituents <clears throat> by broadcast killing of whatever's there. So that's one reason why our appendix is so important. It's not a vestigial do nothing organ. It's actually a safe haven for our gut bacteria. It's the one place in our body where it's able to hide out from antibiotic type of situations. And that's where our gut can be re-inoculated. If you're missing your appendix, you're missing that, that re-inoculation zone for your gut microbiome. So diabetic neuropathy, essentially nerve damage at the periphery, your hands and feet. A lot of people with diabetes no notice that in their feet, sometimes fingertips. But uh, consistent use of lion's mane can help to lower blood glucose levels, also improves type two insulin sensitivity, prevents kidney disease and eye damage that are associated with, with diabetes type two, and also the nerve damage in the extremities. So those who have diabetic neuropathy, that can be quite painful and it can actually help alleviate the pain associated with that. Brain trauma. So it can help uh, prevent additional brain bleeds or clots if you've had a stroke already. Uh, it also aids in protecting the neurons by increasing the oxygen availability and helping to again minimize the blood clot risk and creating additional uh, issues and also improving the memory. So excellent for post concussion for repairing the brain after it's been bruised from having an injury to the head. It actually has uh, an energetics benefit. It aids in energy and can help um, athletic performance in that regard. So it's a rich source of antioxidants. Athletes are gonna be producing a lot more oxidation because they're exchanging a lot more oxygen in a, at a high level of activity. But even just a regular uh, person who's at, being active will also notice benefit from that. So it reduces lactate buildup from exercise. That's one of the byproducts of muscular activity and is what is primarily responsible for muscle soreness. Uh, it also increases oxygen saturation of the blood. So if you have higher oxygen, you have a higher VO2 max, which means you can perform at a higher intensity for a longer period of time. And there's also more energy available. And for an athlete, or even someone who's just trying to sustain an effort for a longer period of time, uh, no matter what your fitness, it can benefit you. So it reduces muscle fatigue and increases muscle glycogen stores, which is the, the rapid storage that has a finite amount of storage capacity based on the muscle density that's present, but it can increase the capacity for glycogen storage. <clears throat> so the more muscle mass you have, the more glycogen you can store for future use in activity. <clears throat> Low muscle mass, little glycogen store. So not as much long-term energy stored in your muscles. So that's an important reason why we need to have and maintain our, our musculature, not only for stability and for protection of our organs, but for energetics. So some harvesting tips. The lion's mane mushroom is again, present late summer to autumn. Uh, 
It uh, look for large mushrooms with multiple hanging white spines. So you can see this is a nice tiered example here again of the lion's bane mushroom. It could be just the lighting here, but it also looks a little bit pink. So this is kind of maybe edging towards an older specimen. Uh, likely it's just the light shining through it, but you want to look for that hue. If it's, if it's too mature, you'd want to choose a different one. You want to remove it from the tree with a sharp knife and avoid taking any wood with it. Leave some behind. It's going to be fairly soft and fragile. It's not going to collapse on you. It's not gooey and mushy, but if you use it, if you abuse it, it's going to fall apart on you. Uh, so leave some behind to reinitiate future growth. So just a warning, uh, if you happen to be allergic to mushrooms, you want to avoid the lion's mane mushrooms, uh, any fungi probably. Uh, you can have skin rashes uh, as an allergic reaction to it. It could be anaphylactic or breathing tightness. If you have anything like that, anaphylactic, breathing, uh, tightening, burning, itching, lip swelling, be sure to consult a physician immediately. And that would be true with any anything like that. Uh, <clears throat> could even be a bee sting, right? So just keep that in mind. And if you have a question on the identification, be sure to consult someone who is an expert um, or would know what they're looking at. So you can use it as a tea as well, lion's mane tea. You can take a, a one half to one whole teaspoon of lion's mane powder, bring the water to a boil, and then uh, just pour that over the powder. So you can use just the powder in a, in a mug or you can put it into a diffuser ball. Uh, and then, or in a tea bag, and then steep that for 10 minutes before consuming. So that would be a lion's mane tea or a lion's mane infusion. And that's looking at uh, lion's mane mushroom as both an edible and a therapeutic uh, feature of God's creation.